Okay, so today we're talking about shoulder in and shoulder in is like the mother of all dressage exercises because it incorporates so much of the fundamental things in dressage. The biggest thing is that shoulder in helps to engage your horse and get your horse to kind of rotate their pelvis under and come a little more up in the front end. So it works on collection. It works on straightness, um, making sure that your horse is really even left and right. It works on bending because to do a correct shoulder in, your horse has to bend around the inside leg. And then shoulder in is the preparation for your half passes and for your pirouettes. So it's really like the parent to all these advanced dressage exercises. So even though the Grand Prix doesn't have shoulder in in it, you have to really um, have mastered the shoulder in in order to be able to ride the half passes in the Grand Prix and also the pirouettes in the Grand Prix as well as the Piaf Passage. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the shoulder in, about the aids for the shoulder in and how to ride the shoulder in and then some exercises that can help with your shoulder in and also some common pitfalls in the shoulder in. So uh, this is Don Carlos. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up because it helps me out. I also, in the description there, I will link to, I have a dressage rider assessment quiz, which is a great quiz to take and help you identify your strengths and weaknesses in dressage. Okay, so I'm going to just start out at the walk here. And so the aids for shoulder in are inside leg at the girth, outside leg behind the girth, because you want your horse bending in the body. Your outside rein brings the shoulders off the rail. Your inside leg keeps the hind end on the rail. Your inside rein is for a little flexion, but you should be able to, in a correct shoulder in, you should be able to give on the inside rein. And it's really important that your weight is on your inside seat bone in the shoulder in. The reason your weight is on the inside seat bone is that this is over the horse's center of gravity. So in a shoulder in, your horse's center of gravity is over the inside hind leg. So you want to be sitting over the inside hind leg. So let me show you again. Shoulder in should have three tracks. So one track is the outside hind leg. Track number two is the uh, track number two is the outside front leg and the inside hind leg. And track number three is the inside front leg. So before you start riding the shoulder, and it's really important that you have a nice trot, that your horse is round and on the bit. I really like to set up my shoulder in with a volte. So using a volte gets your legs in the correct position, gets your horse bending so that you can ride a nice shoulder in. When I look at the rail, I want to feel like I can fit a human between my horse's outside shoulder and the rail. And that's how I know that I have enough angle. It's important like everything in dressage to do the shoulder in both ways and to really notice any differences in the shoulder end from left to right because your horse will be different left to right every horse is so again i'm going to set up with a volte make sure my inside legs at the girth my outside legs behind the girth i'm sitting on his left hind leg so i really want to be sitting on the left hind leg and driving him up through the withers on the right rein. So again, it's an engaging exercise. In the shoulder in, you want your horse to feel like they come more uphill in front and they lower that inside hind leg and they lift more in their outside shoulder. I have to really watch that I don't end up bringing my inside leg too far back in this direction but that I really get him off my inside leg at the girth. So some great exercises for shoulder in. One of my favorites is you start the shoulder in on the rail and then you come a few steps off the rail and you ride shoulder in on the inside track. And then you come a few steps again off the rail 
and ride shoulder in on the quarter line or the center line. Let me show you that one more time. So this is a great exercise to work on making sure that your horse keeps the activity in the outside hind leg in the shoulder end. So shoulder in and then a few steps straight towards the next track. So that's a great exercise to do, especially if you feel like um, your horse won't come off the rail. That's a great one to do. And then mix in, you know, after you've practiced a few long sides of shoulder and mix something in a little forward, it's important that you don't just drill it because your horse is gonna get tired and behind the leg and more frustrated. So again, shoulder in, now a few steps off the rail. Now shoulder in and then a few steps off the rail. No, I don't want canter. So this is a really good exercise because it it teaches you and your horse about both legs. Like there, you know, when I use my outside leg, he wanted to just canter instead of step forward from my outside leg. So I need to teach him that my outside leg can come on and he needs to just step forward but not canter. Good boy. So give that exercise a try and see if it helps with your shoulder in. Good boy, Don Carlos. Good boy. So some of the most common mistakes that I see in the shoulder in, the biggest mistake that I see is that people just do a neck in and they don't actually get the shoulder in off the rail. So they end up doing a shoulder in that has too much bend and not enough angle. So let me let me demonstrate that at once. So a lot of times I see this and this is one of the judges pet peeves too is Someone will ride a shoulder in and they'll just do this. They'll just collapse their horse's neck to the inside, but their horse's shoulders are still on the rail. So that is not a shoulder in. A shoulder in, your, your horse is bending, but they're not more bent in the neck than in the body. And you wanna make sure that that shoulder actually comes off of the rail. So that you keep the neck the head in the middle of the chest and the shoulder actually coming off the rail. Boy. Let me show you once. I'll do a shoulder in on the center line. It's a good exercise too to practice shoulder in on the center line where you bring the shoulders in and think about that inside hind leg going right towards the judge. It's because you have to ride shoulder in on the center line at fourth level and also at the I1. And that again, really challenges and shows whether or not your horse is on the eights. So again, shoulder in, I need my outside leg back. I need to bring the shoulder in. I'm thinking about riding the left hind right towards the judge at C. So another, one of the other common mistakes that I see in shoulder in is that to ride the shoulder in, your inside leg should be here at the girth. So lots of times what happens is people feel like their horse isn't listening to their inside leg here. So they put their inside leg back here. Now, if your leg goes back here, then you're gonna push the haunches out. So you're basically gonna be riding haunches out instead of shoulder in. So it, let me see if I can show you the difference here. So if I put my outside leg back, then the haunches, the, his right hind leg is just swinging out. So you see how he's like really close to the rail. That's not what I want. So to do a shoulder in, I really want to think about bringing the shoulders in. So my outside thigh and my outside rein 
bring the shoulders in and then my inside leg just keeps the horse from falling inward so rather than thinking in a shoulder in that you're pushing the hip out from your inside leg you want to think about that you're preventing the horse from coming in so i think of turning onto a diagonal line but then my inside leg at the girth prevents the horse from falling in instead of um, thinking about that I'm pushing the horse out from my inside leg. So I hope that helps. Another really common mistake in the shoulder in is horses lose impulsion. So for horses that get too slow and lose impulsion in the shoulder in, a great exercise is to do half long side shoulder in, half diagonal, medium trot. And I think this exercise and then shoulder in to bring him back. I think this exercise is in fourth, one of the fourth level tests, maybe one of the third level tests. So shoulder in. And this is a great preparation for the medium because I'm he's engaged, he's up. Now medium. He loves doing mediums and he has a really nice medium. And then I think of a little shoulder in through the corner to bring him back. So since shoulder in is such a good engaging exercise, you can use it and you should use it to prepare for your medium trots. So this exercise not only improves your medium trot, but you can see how Don Carlos is getting now a little more fancy trot, a little more expression in his trot in the shoulder end. And again, I'm sitting on his right hind, right leg, my right leg is at the girth, straight up, medium, shoulder in, bring him back, boy, good boy. It's always important just remember when you're working on the shoulder in to mix it up. Like, don't ride shoulder in after shoulder in. Do half alongside or change direction or stretch your horse or ride a trot lengthening. But it's important not to drill it to where you're getting really stiff and tired and your horse is getting really stiff and tired. It's more important to focus on the quality over the quantity of the shoulder in. But I really want you guys to have that image when you're riding the shoulder in of engaging your horse's inside hind leg. So you really feel like, like if you're riding shoulder in right, it's that diagonal of lowering the right hip, raising the left shoulder and kind of driving your horse diagonally uphill. So I hope that helps you with your shoulder in and I hope you enjoy this video. The end. Good boy, Don Carlos.